Greetings my fellow YouTubers and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duel, better known to y'all as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you another review of the Final Destination series. And that movie of course will be Final Destination 2 from 2003, which I just now finished watching. Uh, the film was directed by David R. Ellis and stars Ali Larder from the first movie, along with A.J. Cook, Michael Lands. Let's see, who else? Let me give me a second. Uh, let's see, T.C. Carson, Jonathan Cherry, let's see, and Keegan Connor Tracy. So. I am going to say that this is as, this comes to being as, this I'm going to say is as good as, is just as good as the first one, but a little more, with a little bit more blood and what have you, which made it a little bit better, so I think this is a better, and a little bit better than the first one, don't get, don't have to take my word for it, but anyway, I must say this is definitely really good. So, let's get into our story. Now, of course, this story takes place at one year after the explosion of Flight 180. Kimberly Corman is heading to Daytona Beach for spring break with her friends. Shayna, Dano, and Frankie, while waiting on the entrance ramp to Route 23, she has a premonition of a deadly pileup caused by a semi carrying logs. So she stalls her car on the entrance ramp, preventing several people from entering the highway, including lottery winner Evan Lewis, widow Nora Carpenter and her 15 year old son Tim, businesswoman Kat Jennings, stoner Rory Peters, pregnant Isabella Hudson. High school teacher Eugene Dix and Deputy Marshal Thomas Burke. Well, while Officer Burke questions Kimberly, the pileup occurs. And, uh, well, Kimberly's three friends are killed by a speeding truck. But Kimberly is saved by Officer Burke at the last second. So the survivors are brought to the police station where they learn about the curse of Flight 18. And, and soon, you guessed it, death's fun begins. <laughs> Evan is the first one to go. A chain reaction causes his, a fire in the apartment after he had won, gotten so much more stuff after winning that lottery. But soon, some death takes its toll and a chain reaction causes a big fire in his apartment. Which he barely escapes, but when Evan slips, the fire escape ladder is starting to shake and soon comes down and oh, that's gotta hurt impales his eye. Yeah. Ouch. That smarts. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to draw any laughter in there. My my apologies. <laughs> No, where was I? Oh, yes. Now, Officer Burke researches the survivors of 1A and discovers that Alex Browning, that was Devin Sawa from the first movie, was killed by a falling brick. Odd, huh? That's kind of a weird thing to know, uh, unfortunately. Unless it was a big cement brick, not a actual red brick. <laughs> oh. I, no, excuse me again. <laughs> but anyway, Kimberly visits the last survivor of Flight 180, Clear Rivers, who is now a voluntary patient at a psychiatric ward. So she refuses to help, though, but while arguing with Kimberly, she realizes that the survivors are dying in reverse and warns Kimberly to look out for signs of death. Upon returning home, she has a vision of a flock of pigeons attacking her, and she and Officer Burke rush to save Nora and Tim, 
but they arrived too late. See, while visiting the dentist, we almost thought Tim was gonna die when, um, well, uh, kind of a rubber, um, a toy, um, blowfish falls into his mouth while trying to put, get put to sleep and what have you from the spinning mobile. But he, they soon save him and what have you, but then he rushes to scare off some pigeons and is crushed by a big glass pane that comes out and, yow! Smushes him like a pancake, even if it, even though it was a glass pane. Well, it sort of did fly him like a pancake, sort of. <laughs> oh well. Anyway, so Claire decides to help and introduces Kimberly and Officer Burke to mortician William Bloodworth. I almost forgot. Once again, played by Tony Todd. Yes, Tony Todd is back in this. Who tells them that only new life can defeat death. They believe that if Isabella has her baby, it will ruin death's plan and they will all be safe. But however, she is accused of driving a stolen van and taken into custody. While the other survivors reunite for safety. But, well, they feel, well, Roy sees kind of like a little bit of a big, kind of a little thing from the strings and what have you. Look like a man with hooks and what have you. And believes Norris next. And, well, as she and Eugene are leaving in an elevator, she, her ponytail gets caught by these hooks by this old man who's got these old kind of artificial limbs with hooks on them and what have you in the back and it catches her and unfortunately the elevator doors are malfunctioning and Kent and Claire were too late as she, her, she, her Norris head is decapitated by him. So they leave to track down Isabel who has gone to labor at the police station. The officer is in complete shock. Cause he's all nervous and whatever. Because Isabel doesn't want baby to be born in the slammer. So he rushes her to the hospital in her van. So along the way, they realize they have all cheated death prior to the Route 23 incident due to the Flight 180 survivors, which explains why death is working backwards. Since Officer Burke saved Kimberly from being hit by the truck earlier, she is last on death's list. Those, the survivor's vehicle suffers a blowout, prompting them to swerve onto a farm, and the back of the car is penetrated by PVC pipes, which injured Eugene, and he's rushed to the hospital. He can't breathe very well. So, Brian Gibbons, son of the farm owner, is nearly killed by a speeding van as Roy saves him at the last second as the rescuers arrive at the scene. Well, apparently, um, Kimberly and Officer Burke decide to go to the hospital check on Isabella while Claire goes to talk to Kat. But, what well, do you know? You're right, she's too late. While using the jaws of life, Cat's rescuer accidentally activates the airbag and her head is, oh, is impaled by a pipe protruding from her headrest. Yeah. That smarts. Forgive me, everyone. Sorry, a moment of silence here. <laughs> Anyway, now I forgot to bring up something. I was really surprised to see um, that um, Catch was played by King and Connor Tracy, who I had recently saw, who I saw her in the short-lived underrated sci-fi series Jake 2.0 with Christopher Gorham. Believe me, that show is very underrated. But now back to Final Destination 2. Yeah. <laughs> And when the, the, the rescuers try getting the jaws of life going, says, could you keep it quiet? It's like, sure, I'll put it on quiet mode. Like, that would be great. And, well, that's when the accident happens. 
So anyway, and if that wasn't enough, her cigarette falls out of her hand into a gasoline leak, leading to the news van, causing the van to explode, and then the barbed wire fence flying through the air, <laughs> killing Roy. And that is, ooh, that's gotta hurt, my friends. Mm-hmm. Anywho, yeah. Now then, I'm going to get to the ending. you got five seconds to stop this vid. Go to the description box and stop the video to avoid hearing the ending. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Now then, Kimberly, Claire, and Officer Burke rush to the hospital, and Kimberly has a nerve vision. Possibly think... Thinking Isabel is being strangled by Dr. Ellen Collage Collagian. Excuse me. So after Burke immobilizes Dr. Collagian, they witness Isabella giving birth, and they assume they have she had death. But unfortunately, worse. Kimberly has a nerve vision of someone with bloody hands in a submerging van, and realizes that Isabella was never meant to die in the pile up. Now, clear searches for Eugene with Kimberly Lee and Officer Burke right behind. But, however, once she finds him, but once she opens up the door to his room, accidentally causes his room to explode from an oxygen combustion, killing them both instantly. Now, and soon, Kimberly, and to make marriage worse, Kimberly learns she's the one to die. Cause, so she immerses a van to, in a lake to drown to herself. Kimberly is rescued by Burke and resuscitated by Collagian, which was her actual premonition, thus granting her new life. Now, sometime later, Kimberly and Burke have a picnic with Brian's family and Kimberly's father to celebrate their survival. There, they learn of Brian's deterrence when death, I mean, from death, when his father tells them he was almost hit by a van, but Roy saved him. But the group then see a malfunctioning barbecue grill explode, called killing Brian to blow him to bits. Yeah. End of story. Now, and what do I think of Final Destination 2? Well, I'm going to have to say, I have to say it's as good as the first one, but with just a little bit more blood and, what ha and gore and what have you, and I think that's reasonable enough. Movie may have gotten mixed response, though, but however, it still proved to be a big success for New Line Sim, who, of course, once again gave us this. I'm going to say the cast is pretty good. I did love the performances from A.J. Cook. She was great. Ollie Larder was great. Everybody was pretty good and what have you. The story was good, too. And I was happy to see Tony Todd again. So, would I recommend Final Destination 2? Hell yeah! This is one you gotta see. You can get this alone, or you can get it in the Final Destination 5 film collection. There is a 4 movie collection, but I'd recommend you get the 5 co movie collection. That way you can have all movies on separate discs and not a flip side disc. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, anyway, I think Final Destination 2 is definitely worth looking into. You will enjoy it. So anyway, what did you think of Final Destination 2? Please feel free to tell me in the comments section. Like and subscribe to my channel as well. And be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me again next time when I review Final Destination 3. Yeah, this is where the series kind of takes a turn. But still, pretty gruesome though. Uh, yep. Now, if you liked what you saw, you can check out some of these other movie reviews. Now, in the upper, now I'm going to go ahead and, and present in the upper left hand corner my review of The Exorcist, which I did a week ago in memoriam to Max von Sado, who we lost. Thank you, you should check that out. It's got lots of views, though. In the upper right-hand corner is my recent spoiler-free review of the new Vin Diesel movie, Bloodshot, based on the comic book character, 
which is pretty cool. I just thought I'd draw it so that way if you would like to see some hear about that. And the bottom left hand corner is my review of the first Final Destination movie. And then the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe for more fun with yours truly, the Big D. And here's to hoping to get 14 more subs. I am currently still at 186, but I'm sure I can make it, even if you know what's in causing y'all to... Well, you, nah, never you mind. I'm sure I can get some subs sooner or later. Thank you again for watching my review of Final Destination 2. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.